Welcome to the StockMentor.com studios here in the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. I am your stock mentor, Brian Johnson. And the markets trended down most of the day after the big gap up on some sort of news about this guy that got killed or something. I don't remember what it was all about. I guess it was some major guy that we over here in America have been looking for for quite a while or something to that effect. Anyway, I'm sure if you Googled it, you could find out who that guy was. It only took up our airwaves last night for the entire night. <laughs> anyway, after the gap up to start the day, by the way, if you guys watched the futures, the futures were way up after that news, after they found Bin Laden. That news was way, um, uh, the markets went straight up afterwards. But then once the day opened today, they slowly started to wind their way down all day long in a nice little bear trend, slowly working their way downwards, till at the end of the day we finish negative. So, a pretty strong move to start, and a very uh, weak move by the bear, or by the bulls, if you will, by the end of the day. So, you know, we're very, very, very extended in here. Um, there's, there's talk out there, I'm going to give you guys some insight here, there's talk out there about the fact that maybe they found Bin Laden, or maybe this happened not just last night, but maybe it happened a while ago, it doesn't really matter, but if it did happen a while ago, and I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't care to pretend to know, but if it did happen a while ago, it could have been a precursor to all of this big run-up in the markets. This is what happens. Buy the rumor, sell the news type of stuff. Now, the whole sell the news thing, as you can see, I want to show you this. Very important to note. Big deal. Look, look. Look at this move. Look at this move. So, yes, we were down today. We were down all day as it just ran itself and grinded downwards. But, look, we didn't break anything. We didn't even, we didn't even manage to, on the Dow anyway, close below the 60, uh, the 20 period moving average on a 60-minute chart. There's just nothing here. So nothing really broken here. Markets just resting, kind of wandering their way sideways, really, for the most part. As you look at, the, and you can see by the end of the day, down 0.02%. It's basically a break-even day um, in all cases, except for maybe the NASDAQ. We could say that was a pretty decent move of 0.3%. But still, overall, just a break-even day. You go right to a daily and you can see, yes, we're going to end up with a potential shooting star candle up here. So however you want to view that. And this is a potential reversal candle. So you want to be very cautious coming into tomorrow. See if we get confirmation by the bears on this thing. All right. Uh, otherwise, maybe it moves sideways. We have seen these type of candles appear before. Um, some of them work, some of them don't. So you've got to wait. You've got to be cautious. You can't just jump to the conclusion that we're definitely going down tomorrow and start selling your life savings short trying to make a bunch of money to the short side doesn't work that way okay it's not the way to trade um, to trade your accounts so let's wait till tomorrow see if we can get some breaks down and below some of these lower levels down here I mean if we can get back below you know 12 750 12 700 okay now you've got a case but right now uh, we just have a candle now, is it an ominous candle sure it is and we'll pay attention to it tomorrow but I'm not sold on it quite yet let's break these lower levels then we'll talk more NASDAQ also kind of falling back in here. I shouldn't call that the NASDAQ. I should say the NDX, which is the 100 strongest stocks in the NASDAQ. Pulling back here, falling right into and around this uh, 20, stuck between the 20 and the 50. You'll notice, though, no real major drop here. I mean, we did get the move up, but by the end of the day, we held what level? The level I was talking about of 2400. So 2395, 2400 is still my level right here for all of you to be watching in the NASDAQ. What do we have right here? Now, notice, what, notice the candle we got on Friday. Yeah, maybe a shooting star, but really means nothing to me. Uh, just as the one we saw on, on the Dow really doesn't mean anything quite yet. It's a little bit more powerful than what this one is, but it's still n nothing really for me to freak out about quite yet. What is this here? It's just a high base, guys. This is still a bullish move right here. It's all a high base formation. That 24, 23, 95 area is what you have to be watching coming into tomorrow with your NASDAQ trades. Just started the week. Won't talk about it quite yet. SPX 60 minute here falling back and just add around below the 20 period moving average on a 60 minute chart same thing we were talking about on the Dow but look at this look at this big move today it wasn't a big move over uh, you, you take the high of 1370 where we closed at 1361 it's a 9 10 point move big deal all day long compared to where we came from it's a blip on the radar so 
See if we get some confirmation from this tomorrow because the daily does look a little bit more bearish. Not quite as clean as the Dow looks right now from a candle standpoint. This is just a whatever uh, type of a candle. You can make it into whatever and call it a um, dark cloud cover. How about that? Look at me go. Wow, I'm not even really into the whole candle formation type things like other people are. I recognize when it is a potential reversal candle, but look at me go with the dark cloud cover. Check that out. I would kind of consider that to be to be that anyway. Point is, we, we uh, let's let's look tomorrow. See if we can get back below about 1355, 1350ish area. Any kind of a pullback, guys. It's 1340, 1345 is what you're looking at for lower support. VIX on a daily was up ever so slightly. Remember, I talked about these lower, lower, lower levels down here. This is a very, very common place to see a nice bounce in the VIX. This is great if you're an options trader. You love to see the VIX get down into this area, and then it's just a matter of getting the call right on whatever it is you're trading. You got you to gotta get the long right or the short right, whatever it is, and if you can get the VIX to go with you, in great shape. You'll, you'll make extra money on those type of trades. Weekly, it's just started for the week, but you can see what it's trying to do, and that is get back up and over this little channel that we've been following forever and a day. Fell below it for three straight weeks. Now maybe it's going to try to make a move to the upside. It wouldn't surprise me. We really are due for a pullback here. It doesn't have to happen. Didn't have to happen today, but it could continue over the next few days. Um, just watch the strength of it. That's the most more major thing. Apple still stuck in this trading range, still looking at 345 and 355 ultimately, 354 if you want to get more aggressive, but it's a 10 point range here in my book. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a 10 point. 345, 355 is really what you're watching. What is this? It's a really big trading range, but ultimately it's bullish. It's just a huge, fat, large pullback, high base, however you want to look at this. I like it as a pullback. This is the type of movement we saw on the NASDAQ a few weeks ago. Remember where it just went down and, and there was like a million candles down. Took it a while, but notice how it's holding these levels here. Okay, 344, 345. That is very, very important going forward. So let's see if this area holds coming into, um, you know, the rest of the week. I won't say tomorrow we're going to break or the next day, whatever. Anyway, back below 340, even 344, if you're going to swing trade this, okay, if you're a day trader, take the marks I gave you in the last chart. If you're a swing trader, you want to be very cautious. Look for a little bit deeper dive here below that 344, just below the 50-day. Okay, so where that goes, what it does, you want to watch that closely. And then even below that, this 342.50, which is still a nice, you know, buck and a half move, but it, it's not a large move in Apple, happens in a blink of an eye, ultimately would be your first target area, even after breaking the 50-day 50, um, uh, 50 moving average. <clears throat> so watching this level here, there's a lot of support below Apple. So you've got the 50, you've got this previous channel line, you've got the 20. A lot of work to be done here by the bears. Apple weekly, okay, still holding the 20 week as well. That's at 342. Uh, another good reason to look at that for um, support on any kind of a move down. All right. FAS 60 minutes started up, uh, came down. This formation right here right now is a low base formation. If it'll get back below those moving averages, it's a good day trade. So back below about 29.80, not a bad trade to the downside and probably make, you know, 30 cents or more off that trade by the time it's all said and done. If you look at it from a daily, you can see this putting in the same type of a thing. Start up, move back down. That is not the most bullish action in the world. That's for sure. You can call this a bearish engulfing. I don't care what you call it. You can call it Fred. It really doesn't make a difference to me. Point being, back below about $30 is your trade to the short side. Don't try to, I would not try to front run this. Really. I, I'm a little bit more conservative in that way, but look, you've got two strong moving averages sitting right here. This thing has had a very, very nice push up. I would look for this to hold. If it drops below 30, I'd be cautious. I'd, I'd still go short, but I'd be cautious because you don't want it to, you know, kind of put the little wick in where it drops down and then comes back up. So if you get in below 30, just make sure to try to get uh, back to break even as quickly as you can. Okay, so we're wandering sideways here um, for the time being. Maybe we see another push up tomorrow. Ultimately, we're going to watch. Is it going to do a high base or is it going to move downwards? Back below 30, still your mark. Back above 31, I still like it if it'll run up and through. I do not like gaps up and above areas, but I like it when it runs up and through. So below 30, above 31 for your trade. Faz did, of course, the opposite. And I'm just going to flip right to it daily and show you. This looks like a bullish engulfing ish if you want to. Back above $40, or back above these moving averages here. 
Okay, so back above these moving averages, if you want to take a, a shot at a long on this, that's your area to look at. 42 is strong, 44 is strong. Uh, still good movement though, opportunities for some, some good trades. Below 37.50 still might drop to the downside. This could consolidate. If it consolidates down here, it's a low base looking formation. If we can get back above these moving averages, that's a little bit stronger for the bulls. And that's what you'll be watching if you are an FAZ bull. If you'd like to go long this thing, it's not bad. Some mutual funds and stuff have that too. Um, okay, so overall, the financials moving sideways right here, trying to track their way, looking for some kind of footing as they have been time and time and time again. Once we hit this thing, it was a straight drop down. Now we are moving sideways, consolidation, but this consolidation, till otherwise proven, which is back above these moving averages, is bearish. It is not bullish. So you want to be very cautious with this trade down in here. All right, I am going to give you guys last week's pick from the subscribers list, but I'm going to give you the actual audio and video from uh, last week's pick. Um, because uh, I have the time to do it this week. I don't always have the time, but I do this time. So I'm going to slice it up a little bit and put it in. So here is the uh, stocks that we followed last week on the subscribers list. And um, this is the actual audio. So you guys have a feel for how the subscribers newsletter works. This is the type of information that will help you guys. Like I said, 20 bucks a month, super cheap. But this is the actual audio from it. And... Um, then um, I'll be right back after it's done. Gold looking strong. Here's your overhead line. Extended this little gray line. Granted, this is an area. So let's call this 1520-ish. But that's like 1518 to 1525, 15 whatever. It, it just find an area up here. 1520 is your gray line. Above that's going to be 1530, something like that. That's a pretty strong move at that point by gold. Could very well be if this is some sort of a wave three on the way up here. That could very well be the next target. Point is, gray, then blue, those are your next overhead targets. We get back below this 1480-ish level, I'd be a little bit more on the cautious side. If you're in this thing long and you're staying in it long, you, you definitely want to be out below 1480. If you haven't already put your stop up below, you know, 1490, 1495, it's kind of up to you. We were in this thing from about 1465, 1470, so where you've got it now is uh, completely up to you. But man, I'd let it run. You know, give it some room, but make sure you make money on it, as I've... Uh, pounced on you guys in the in the past about that stuff. A BG I've added to the mix. We just had a nice sharp move to the downside and a pop out and above it. Uh, here's where we're at. We're in a big triangle right here. Once again, thank you Woody for the chart. And you can see the push being made to the upside. I like it above $74 for the more aggressive and above $75 for the more conservative. Back below $70 for a short. Um, yep, you can certainly take that. I don't like that trade as much as I like it long. So we maybe pull back a little bit before we get the break to the upside. This might be one we have to watch for a week or two, and that's okay. I like it. So DTG, I left it on here. We saw the break short below here, but we're still stuck in this range, and I really feel a break's coming. I am definitely more bullish on this move, guys. This is a high base consolidation, and it is typically more bullish than it is bearish. However, I'm not afraid of trades short below the 20 day and trades long above 70 again. I'm going to leave it at those levels and see if we can't make some money on this thing this week. DTV is another one I put on. Don't like the 60, but I like the daily, and this is what I like above that 47.25 uh, mark. So above 47.25 and below 45.50. I think this is putting in right now a pretty decent looking ascending triangle. And so I like where we're at. Above 47.25, below 45.50 for your trade on DTV. LSTR I put on here as well. Like the consolidation I'm seeing here. Below 46 and above 48 are your trades on that this week. Another one like um, what we've seen in the past. Might have to let it consolidate for a while, but... These are the trades, above 48, below 46. PRGO, I like what I'm seeing here as well. Looks like an ascending triangle. So I would say above the 89.50 mark on this one for your long and try to sneak a little bit more out of it. I love these high base consolidations. I've been seeing a lot of these lately. I've been, Woody has been sending me a lot of these lately um, and they've worked beautifully for us so far.
Okay, so that was last week's picks. That gives you an idea of what happens in the video, in the uh, subscribers' newsletters. You'll see that there's a lot more lines drawn in. There's a lot more, you know, e exact information given. Entries, exits, stops, targets, the whole bit. This is all updated during the week as well. So what I gave you was like last Sunday's, not yesterday's, but last Sunday's video. Uh, and then during the week, every night, I give updates on those on those stocks what to do, where we're at, how to play them, what I would suggest. It's completely up to you uh, if you follow it or not. But I give and I continue to give updates all during the week. That includes the intraday updates as well. Uh, well worth your time. We've done very, very well in the newsletter the last few weeks. Feel free to go back on uh, to the previous Monday's videos. Just go back you know, to last Mondays and the previous Mondays and stuff. And you'll see what we've been following and you'll see what we've been tracking. And it's been working very, very well for us, especially in the uh, gold department. Boy, we just made a killing on gold. Uh, that's been very, very good for us. Okay, I'll let you leave you guys with that. And uh, I will be back with you potentially tomorrow. If not tomorrow, definitely, definitely again on Wednesday. See you later. Bye.